Hello everyone, my name is Janusz Tefull, also known as Rising Fury, and I'm one of the developers of Orbiter Battle Simulation Project. More specifically, my work is on the AI and autopilots. And this video is going to introduce you uh, to my work. The scenario you're looking at playing uh, in the video contains two Delta Glider vessels. Uh, the first Delta Glider is currently being seen from the cockpit and it contains instructions uh, to basically fly waypoints around Cape Canaveral. Uh, the waypoints are going to take uh, it over Launch Complex 39B, over Vehicle Assembly Building, the north end of Runway 33, uh, and later over the over where the uh, Cape Canaveral base is positioned in orbiter. After that, it's going to gain altitude to 10 kilometers uh, and start heading to Cuba. The second vessel, uh, which uh, uh, which is following uh, glider one. Uh, just con contains an instruction to try to follow it and fly in formation. Uh, its goal is to fly 30 meters behind and to uh, to the right of the first vessel. Uh, now it's not going to be able to do that all the time because the autopilot currently isn't accurate enough. Uh, it can handle well uh, it can handle itself well while, while flying straight, but it will lose formation in turns. Uh, Orbiter uh, OBSP currently contains only one part of the AI. The AI is going to be split into two parts. One is going. Uh, one is the instruction queue, which basically con uh, contains dumb instructions. I'll explain that a bit later. The second part is the actual AI which which can take care of the unexpected elements and surprises. The instruction queue just stores instructions. It's, it, you can think of it kind of like a robot. You can tell a robot to walk from point A to point B. It'll, it'll move its feet, but if it falls over, uh, it's kind of going to get stuck. The AI, which will later come in, will be able to figure out that the robot is stuck and take measures to get it back on its feet. Uh, the current formation flying uh, just uses two instructions. Uh, as I said before, Glider 1 is programmed to fly waypoints and Glider 2 is just programmed to follow it. Um, uh, and the the actual work is being done by uh, two functions within uh, within the program. One is designed to rotate the vessel into the correct um, heading, and the other one controls the throttle. Now both of these are still going to need some tweaking because I, I think they can be improved. Uh, first of all, you can probably see that Glider Two is struggling. Uh, with formation flying, especially when trying to rejoin, it takes a lot of time to rejoin formation. Uh, I'm most likely go going to uh, increase the speed limits at uh, which the the following vessel can approach uh, the first vessel. Also, the the function that does uh, that controls the ailerons can be improved a little bit, so it can anticipate uh, where the uh, where the target is going to be uh, in a certain amount of time so it can more accurately guide the vessel. Um, also you've probably noticed red text scrolling at the top of the screen. Basically it says, uh, I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but basically it says anytime the glider 1 passes a waypoint it says Glider 1 passing waypoint and its number. That was done by Escape Tom's Fate and I'm going to let him um, explain a little bit about that. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna add is uh, a little bit about the instruction queue. Currently the instructions can be added through, through the, the scenario 
or through an uh, LUA script or even through the LUA terminal uh, within Orbiter. However, this video will not cover how, uh, how to add in these instructions uh, and how to execute them. The last thing I want to say is uh, a big thanks to project leader Tom, Escape Tom's Fate. Uh, he's been like the best, with, uh, it's been the best uh, working with him. Real pleasant guy, so keep up the good work. Anyways, um, thank you for watching the video and have fun.